neighborhood, or any given defined area and catalog everything that's alive within those boundaries. And they count everything. Salamanders, spiders, bees, bats, bugs, birds. But the catch is, they only have 24 hours to do it. Welcome to Rock Creek Park. Established in 1890, it runs smack dab through the center of the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. But today, it's going to be transformed into a giant laboratory. Dozens of scientists from around the country, along with hundreds of volunteers, have invaded the park for something called a bioblitz. The bioblitz was organized in part by the National Geographic Society. The goal is simple. In one 24-hour period, count everything that is alive in the park. And by everything, we mean everything from the easy big guys like deer and rabbits to the tiniest lichens. The lichen team takes their search to the top of the canopy, collecting bark samples from white oak trees. And we will be collecting bark samples at 10 feet intervals all the way to the top. Now these bark samples will have mosses, liverworts, lichens, fungi, and myceps, which are called sometimes called slime molds. <laughs> Another team is led by Mike Fay, the man who trekked 1,200 miles through the Congo. Today, he's doing a mini transect through the park. They just started letting the forest grow back. And, you know, this forest has pretty much been completely unmanaged and undisturbed since about 1880. And the park was established in 1890. The human I'm taking credit for finding the first species. Here's one that's easy to spot, a luna moth. Blends right into my shirt. I found the uh, first species of the bio blitz, and it's a beautiful one. National Geographic explorer and resident and oceanographer Sylvia Earle is here as well. The thing about bio blitz is it brings out the kid in everybody. So you see people here who haven't really come to appreciate the marine backyard. This is causing them to come out and share in the fun. The combination of teamwork and a 24-hour ticking clock creates a kind of bio-blitz buzz. It's alive, don't worry. The event certainly has Dr. Stuart Pym, a ecologist from Duke University, excited. He's focused on biodiversity for over 30 years. The extraordinary thing about these bioblitzes is just how much stuff there is here. You know, this is really where the wild things are. There really is a huge amount of stuff in this city park. Park rangers are on duty to offer their expertise. In this case, helping a group in search of caterpillars, spiders, and butterflies. Bugs are major players at a bioblitz. One reason being, there are a lot of them. But there's more to the appeal of these creepy crawlers than sheer numbers. They offer an infinite variety of colors, shapes, and behaviors, perhaps best appreciated when seen close up. Photographer David Litchwater specializes in portraits of endangered species, but at the BioBlitz, he's focused on insect work. We see a lot of pictures of lions and tigers and bears, but uh, you don't often see a portrait of a spider, nice and close. Some people don't like spiders, <laughs> but I have a great affection for them, but uh, I like them to stay on the glass. <laughs> Litschwager worked all through the night taking pictures, but he wasn't alone in foregoing sleep. With only a 24-hour window to catalog every living thing they could find, all the participants were pushing to the final minute. And even at the end, not everything collected had been identified. Here's the thing about the BioBlitz, uh, finding them is sometimes far easier than identifying them. The thing about these field guides is, you know, they have a few pictures, but remember, there are millions of these species. 
The mushroom and fungus specialists were confident they had been able to identify 35 different species. Biologist John Elephant says some are That's edible, most interesting. some not. Of course, when something's edible, there's always one species that tastes like chicken. Chicken of the woods, as it's called. The texture is somewhat like chicken breast. <laughs> The official tally after 24 hours showed 666 different species had been identified in Rock Creek Park. But as more species are put under the microscope, that number is sure to increase. With people still packing up their beetles and tree mold and mosquitoes, National Geographic and the National Park Service were already making plans for next year's bio blitz in Santa Monica, California. Think of the number of people in LA that just don't understand that, you know, a, a less than a half hour drive away, they can be out in this wonderful wilderness overlooking the ocean w with guidance from the people who know that area like nobody else on the planet. The real purpose of the BioBlitz is to get people interested in the biodiversity that's all around them, even in their own backyards. And if you want a real challenge, try to talk Gary Hevel. It's over 4,000 species. Who's assembled this collection from his own two-acre Maryland yard. In four years of cataloging the creatures in his yard, Hevel has identified over 4,000 different species. The regal moth, antlion, gypsy moth. So for all you backyard biologists, start counting. The clock is running.